Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, here to meet your urgent and emergent medical needs, whether they are COVID-19 related or not. Medical emergencies happen when you least expect them. Whether it's a stroke, heart attack, illness, or injury, San Juan Regional Medical Center's caregivers are here to provide care to you and your loved ones. Find out more online at sanjuanregional.com. Eleven minutes past eight o'clock. It is Tuesday morning, June the 29th, 2021. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Micklin, and thank you for tuning in to KSJE 90.9 FM over the air here, of course, in San Juan County, New Mexico. 103.3 FM over the air in Durango, Colorado, and of course, streaming everywhere, including to your smart speaker from KSJE.com. Welcome aboard, everyone. We are glad that you are with us. Welcome also to our viewers who are watching this visual radio program. It is streaming live today to the KSJE Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter account. We're glad that you are with us this morning, too. Coming up in the next few moments, we're going to be talking about children's services from Presbyterian Medical Services. They're my guests in the studio from home visiting to Head Start to Early Head Start to Pre-K. Those are the topics that we're talking about this morning here on KSJE. And then, of course, later on this hour at 8.50 a.m., it is our Adopt-A-Pet Tuesday segment. I'll be talking with Amber Francisco from the Farmington Regional Animal Shelter, and we'll be meeting some of the pets available for adoption this week, including this little guy who's on the screen right now looking for his forever home. Oh, we may have gotten adopted right here in the studio. Who knows? We'll see. I don't know. But that's coming up later on 8.50 this morning on KSJE. And then next hour, of course, it's Roving with the Arts, our classical music program. Mick Hess will be taking us on the program today and sharing some music from the great Joseph Haydn. That's coming up today at 9.06 on KSJE. And we also invite you to connect with us on our Instagram page in addition to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And let's talk about the weather forecast, shall we? Outside right Right now, a nice cool 60 degrees this morning under mostly cloudy skies after a pretty good night of rain across much of the listening area today. And we're expecting more of the same. A mostly cloudy day today in Farmington and the uh, surrounding areas. Good chance for some scattered showers, and that chance increases throughout the day today. The high only ranking it to 76 degrees in Farmington, 59 overnight tonight. Another chance of thunderstorms again tomorrow with partly cloudy skies. The high 82 on Wednesday, 87 on Thursday. Things warming up again to 89 by Friday, 91 on Saturday. But take a look, still a good chance for a scattered shower or thunderstorm over the next several days. Well, let me introduce my guests who are here with me this morning, as I mentioned, from Presbyterian Medical Services. Jill Adair is here. She is a Children's Services Director here in the Northwest Region. Always great to have you here. Good morning. Welcome back to KSJE. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You bet. Also, Amy Dixon is here, and she is the Home Visiting Administrator for Presbyterian Medical Services. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for being here, both of you. And as I always like to remind the audience that I am a proud board member of Presbyterian Medical Services, so that's my connection to uh, the topic this morning. But I always learn something from my guests, because I think I know it all as a board member, but I really don't. Yeah. So great to have you both here. Thank you very much. And Jill Adair, let's start with you a little bit about kind of the year that you've had with Children's Services and talking about Head Start and early Head Start and kind of switching to virtual and non-face-to-face -face and still trying to do some face-to-face -face things with your families. So how did it, how did it go? Well, you know, last year was a, was a hard year for all of us, of course. Um, so really, you know, we ended up ending the year uh, with about 75% of our, of our classrooms open. Um, and, you know, with true face-to-face, -face, um, 
type of, of instruction. And then we still offered um, the virtual classrooms as well. So really our goal this year is 100%. Um, really Office of Head Start really wants to see that we have all of our children back in our classrooms uh, with face-to-face -face learning. Parents really having that option to get back to work um, and or to school, mm -hmm. you know, um, of course with safe practices, you know, we uh, are still awaiting some guidelines um, and guidance from uh, the early childhood um, ECCD um, program right. there to, to kind of say, okay, yes, you can have. Your preference you know, would be face-to-face. Yeah, -face. Our preference is face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we just have to kind of wait for that piece to say, do we need masks? What do we need to do? Of course, we'll continue with, you know, all of our type of, of true um, sanitizing and all of those things to keep everybody safe, which, you know, quite honestly, we, we've always have done right. in that fashion. Um, we kind of beefed it up a little bit more for sure. So Well, we've talked know. about the accreditations that uh, yep. your centers have received, and so mm -hmm. that's all mm -hmm. part of that, I would assume, of reaching some of those levels, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely, absolutely. Very good. And so <laughs> your preference is face-to-face. -face. It sounds like you'd still offer maybe a, a virtual option if parents don't feel comfortable maybe sending their children face to face at, at at once yeah absolutely so that is something that we've been discussing because we we really want to make sure that, that the children are getting um, some true early childhood education and you know if, if the parents aren't ready you know then they definitely need to talk with their family service assistant and let them know you know i'm really not ready quite yet for face to face and we will definitely still get them enrolled and and ensure that we can you know figure out how we're going to do that you know, um, but we really want to have the majority of our classrooms open. We really want to have, you know, service to those 360 children. Right. Yeah. And I and I think it seems like what we've learned, if anything, over the last year is that virtual is an option, mm -hmm. but face to face is maybe the, the best way of providing this education and, mm -hmm. and help for families and, and things along that line. Do you think that's yeah. a fair statement? I would say absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, really what our, our children need is that social interaction you know they really need, at that age right they do they really do at that age they that's how they're learning how to share you know they're they're learning how to express well, some adults feelings. need to go back to your head start classes, <laughs> Jill Adair, i'm sorry to say true. but uh, maybe we can sign them up but anyway yes ma'am absolutely so <laughs> but really that's that is you know the social aspect sure. you know of that um along right. with of course we utilize cr creative curriculum and so mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really it really is better when we do virtual. We definitely still provide some lesson plans over Zoom, and uh, we send home activities and things like that. And it definitely does bring the family more involved because it kind of becomes that home teacher type of aspect. Um, but we really do think face to face is is better. Right, and again, that's going to be your your preference moving forward yes. here in the fall, and uh, of course. Um, as we always say in this business, stay tuned because you're awaiting some guidance from yeah. the folks that, that help you and determine in our mm -hmm. state kind of how these things are going to work. Yes, absolutely. So very good. Amy Dixon, let me turn to you a little bit about your job, which is a home visiting administrator with Presbyterian Medical Services. And this mm -hmm. is something that is um, somewhat of a, a newer mm -hmm. type of a type of an arrangement for families to get to have someone come into their home to help yes. with um, bringing up children or doing virtual visits as well, as you were telling me before we came on the air this morning, there is mm -hmm. that option for your area as well, right? Yeah, so we are 100% doing virtual services right now. So we are doing Zoom sessions or just calling the parents and talking with them twice a month or more. Um, and we do provide activity bags. We'll drop them off on their porch and have them interact with their children doing educational activities. And so we are 100% virtual right now. So Got you. And yes. as you plan for the fall, is that something that maybe um, you're looking at trying to get back face-to-face -face with these families as well as yes. you're allowed to do safely? Yeah. So we are in that same boat waiting for state approval from ECECD to go back into the homes. And it, I feel like it would be dependent upon the family, whether they prefer in-home services or virtual. Right. And you were t we were talking before, again, we, we got on the air this morning about how important these home visits can be for people that work with you around, you know, just kind of seeing the interaction between mom and the child or dad and the child or the siblings and the child or mm -hmm. all those different things that maybe you can't see as readily through a virtual connection. 
Right. So like if a family is struggling with behavior of their children, it's a little bit easier to be inside the home to kind of see that for myself and offer tips and tricks so I could just go off of basically what I hear from mom telling me, oh, well, they're having a biting issue. So we do deal with um, stuff like that, but it is easier to be in the home to provide those services. But it's we figured out a way right, <laughs> to right. do it virtually. It's working. Yes, it is working. Gotcha. So the families are liking it too. And, and you are working with families with children between the ages of what, birth to three? Yes. Yeah, so we start when mom is pregnant okay. all the way till the child is three. And your services are free to yes. these families too. We mm -hmm. want to make sure we mention that as well. And and no income requirements? Nope, no income requirements as long as they live in San Juan County. And if they're pregnant or have a child under the age of three, they qualify. Got you. And so all they would have to do, these families, is call Presbyterian Medical Services and, and put in an application or yes. get signed up. That's how it yeah. works. Yes, so we just have one basic referral form that states address, phone number, name, date of birth, and you're in. <laughs> there you go. Very good. And Jill Adair, same question to you. I know um, Head Start, Early Head Start, these are free services for most people that apply. Is that how it works? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we don't charge the families for anything. Uh, for our Early Head Start, we actually provide the diapers um, and the wipes and formula. Um, along with, of course, a breakfast, lunch, and snack, you know, and so that alone is a huge savings, you know, just when you take your children to some other providers and or in-home child care, often the parents have to bring their, their own diapers, their own wipes, their own meals, you know, for them. So we do provide all of that at 100%. Got you. And same thing. They just would, uh, families could call Presbyterian Medical Services and fill out that, that form they to uh, get in the program? Yes. So we do have an application. We um, are income based. However, again, I always like to say do not think that, oh, you're not going to qualify. You would be surprised. There's many things that we look at. Um, and so definitely come by. You can stop by any one of our seven locations throughout the county. You can give us a call and we can mail you an application, anything like that. So, gotcha. Really, really easy. Lots of options. And I'll ask you to give the phone number here as we get close to the okay. end of the program. If folks right. are listening, okay. want to grab a pencil and jot it down, or okay. certainly can go online sure. and look up Presbyterian Medical Services and uh, get in contact with, with you to talk about these services. Now, pre K is another thing that we want to talk about this morning, and that is another service of your department it is it is so we have one pre-k classroom um, here in farmington it's at 900 south carlton it's at our carlton center um, and so that serves four-year-olds and uh, we also utilize our creative curriculum as well and again it, there's no cost at all for that program um, we also provide breakfast lunch and snack and so what we do a little bit different with our pre-k than some of the others is that you know, we utilize all of our screenings and things like that that we still do with the Head Start side and our early Head Start side. So those children that are in our pre-K are still getting their vision screenings, dental screenings, developmental screenings, you know, um, hearing. I don't know if I said hearing. Um, right. You know, but yeah. All those. All that. All Got that. you. Yeah. And that's helpful, again, for development and kind of identifying right. these things early right. on to see if maybe the, the student, the child would need extra maybe attention at, at school. Exactly, exactly. Sometimes, you know, the children's hearing, when they're born, they're checked. You know, they're just a couple of days old, mm -hmm. you know, and so we really, you know, we don't check their hearing. They, they don't get it checked, you know, quite honestly, probably until later on in life, you know, even for at the public schools, they don't necessarily do that. You know, vision's a different thing. We do get our vision checked, you know, um, quite often. So that's what's really nice to be able to see you know, maybe something has developed, you know, in that fashion. As well as true, your developmental screenings and nutritional screenings we also do. Um, and we also, you know, we have a nutritionist, you know, that, that will meet with the families. And again, there's no cost for any of those things. And if, on um, whether it's pre-K and or our Head Start site and or our home visiting site, you know, we also will still work with our early intervention program, if there needs to be a referral, you know, as well as with the public schools um, for any type of referral once they, you know, hit the age three and they're ready for um, special preschool, if that's if that's something that's warranted. Right. And you can work with all those. Yep. You can work with all of that. And help that family yep. to 
get them to whatever they need. Mm -hmm. And that's, Absolutely. I think, important to say. And remind me again about the age ranges for Head Start and Early Head Start. You did sure. say pre-K is for the four-year-olds. Yes. And the others would cover what to what? So Early Head Start is ages six weeks to three, and then Head Start is three to five. And so what is great is that with the program that Amy oversees, our home visiting program, so she starts prenatal, essentially, up right. to age three. So we really work together. You know, if there's children, she can, we can still have home visits, and they can still come to our Early Head Start program. And that's great. And I imagine there's a lot of families that do that, too, and they feel comfortable <laughs> with the folks from Amy's program and yeah. they transition right into, into uh, yours. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then, you know, we still have our sister program, which is Roundtree Children's Developmental Services. So quite honestly, a family could have all three services, you know. So if there is truly a, a disability or somebody that's at risk for disability, they could still have Amy's program. They could still utilize our early intervention program, which would allow um, for any type of therapies, things like that, that need to come into the home again at no cost to them, um, as well as then come into our facility, you know, for early head start for child care. Nice. Well, yeah. and again, as a, me a board member, I'm thrilled to kind of hear that kind of wrap around exactly. services that um, can be offered to families who need them yeah. and don't have to go from door to door to door, 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 to, door, door. door to, um, to get that help. Exactly. Exactly. Which I think someone probably was thinking when they put that all together right. at a much higher pay level than all, <laughs> than all of us in this room. Right, but right. I'm very proud yeah. to be a part of that organization. Absolutely. Amy, let me come back to you a little bit sure. and talk about what Jill was mentioning is mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, talking to families and helping them from even before the child is born yes. to age three and then maybe passing them off to the Early Head Start program mm -hmm. um, when the time comes. Yeah, so families do really enjoy that aspect that we work closely with Head Start. And like she said, people can go, they, they might wanna get a, their job back or even go to school and need help with childcare, but they still don't wanna stop our program necessarily. So we'll meet them like on a Saturday or even after hours, like after 5 p.m., whatever works in the parent's schedule is where we'll meet them. So Very that's good. helpful. Terrific. And, and Jill, you mentioned at the beginning of the program, too, maybe that there are some families, parents listening to us this morning, watching us this morning, that are planning to maybe go back to work or school, mm -hmm. as Amy was mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they've been off or working from home mm -hmm. for the past 15 months and right. maybe they're hearing that you know the office is going to open back up at least right. for a couple of days a week and so we expect you there and what are you going to do right. for child care and things like that yeah. so maybe folks are having that conversation this summer yeah absolutely it's it seems i know it's been 15 months and it just feels weird to say that for one and then it feels weird that i'm sitting here talking about we're starting up a new school year already right um so i i, I know that kind of seems it seems surreal in one sense but don't hesitate because you right now we are in June. Um, we start August 16th, so we are doing selections now. So, it, you know, the, it's a first come, first serve basis. Right. And so if you, you know, are thinking that maybe you want to go back to school or you're thinking you need to get a job or you're thinking more than likely you're going to be going back, you know, to work, please come by, get an application and get that in now so that you can secure a spot. You have a limited number of, of spots in your centers, right? I mean, you know you have centers all over the county, yes. but still there's a limited number. There is. There's a limited number. Um, and, you know, at each one of our different locations, so we have seven different locations throughout the county. So um, we're really everywhere, you know, when you think about it in that fashion. Um, we're up off of the Nappy area. There we do early head start, um, and we have, again, ages six weeks to three up there with four classrooms, 28 children. So, you know, very limited right. um, in that, that fashion. That fills up quick, I that, would think. Yes, it, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, we have our Rosinante site. There we have 16 children. Um, and we really want to work with those teen moms, you know, that so that they can drop their child off at Rosinante and go to school. They don't have to go to school at Rosinante. They can go to school anywhere you mm -hmm. know even be homeschooled pv fhs um it doesn't matter you know even aztec doesn't matter right um so we have 16 slots there uh, and then we have our carlton site which is here in farmington 900 south carlton uh and there we have um gosh like 140 or so children but we have 15 classrooms 
one of those being pre-K, um, and then we have our seven um, Head Start classrooms, and um, and as well as what it's six early Head Start. So quite a few children in that fashion. Um, there again, six weeks up to five. Uh, then we have our Kirtland, so we partner with KECC, and we have one classroom there, uh, and that's uh, four-year-olds, three and four-year-olds, excuse me, our Head Start. Mm -hmm. And then we're out at uh, Bloomfield, we're at Charlie White Brown facility, um, and there I have two classrooms, so 16 kids ages six weeks to three, and then last but not least, our Aztec site. Um, and there I have two early Head Start classrooms, and so that's still fairly new. This is going on our second year, having early Head Start out there. So we're, the community's still kind of learning that, hey, they have, they have early Head Start, not just Head Start. So uh, definitely applications, you know, need to come in there for ages six weeks to three, as well as one Head Start classroom for 20 kids. Okay, <clears throat> very good. Me. That's all right. And that Charlie Y. Brown site, I would mm -hmm. think, is similar to your Rosanante it site is. because both of those are kind of the alternative schools in those districts. Yes, absolutely. So we really want to work with our teen parents. And again, they do not... I, I can't stress this enough. They do not have to attend Charlie White Brown. And we are not located within that school. We have two portables um, that are very easy access from the parking lot. Um, it is really is, has been, we've been out there for a good 10 plus years. Um, and so again, they don't have to be attending that facility. They could still be attending Bloomfield High School, um, you know, and or working for the school districts, you know, so. Uh, Even coming over from Aztec, though, could be yeah, an option for that absolutely. site, too, in addition mm -hmm. to Rosinante, right? It, it's 6 and one maybe for some folks. Yeah, absolutely, because sometimes it might be a little bit closer. Right. For sure. So just yeah, want to throw that out there. Yes, thank And make you. sure folks are aware. Um, but again, uh, these slots do fill up. They do. And, uh, and it's important to kind of think ahead to mm -hmm. kind of how your life is going to look in August right. To, right. to determine if, uh, if this could be helpful to you. Absolutely. And remind me again, because I know, and you've done a really good job of trying to remind me every time we talk <laughs> about half day, full uh -huh. day, mm -hmm. those different options as well. Is that still something that folks have, have choices about? So we are now um, 100% five days a week, six and a half hours a day. Okay. So um, we really match kind of the public schools a little bit in that fashion. Okay. So truly that's And that's kind of been day. by what is what worked for most folks? Is that kind of the decision it process is, there? It is. So we do community needs assessments. And when we do those, um, that really the community drives what that what those services need to be. Right. And uh, really a couple years ago, it kind of came out that really they're really wanting six and a half hours a day. They want to be able to take their child to school at the same time that a sibling may be in a public school. Gotcha. So, yeah. That's how it works. That's how it works. And so as folks that's are, are talking, they can certainly find out yeah. the details, but mm -hmm. that's kind of what it's designed to, to yeah. do. Yeah. And I do want to state um, for our early head start, so for those children, again, six weeks to three, if you are having reservations, you know, again, with pandemic, social distancing, all those things, you know, I just really want to stress it's a small classroom, eight children eight children in those rooms um you know very large room that could that could fit more than that but really we follow one to four ratio two teachers eight children gotcha yeah. and so it's probably somewhat easy to keep them separated absolutely absolutely and yep. and following up some of those other guidelines mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. face to face, face yes absolutely. So, good to know yeah. amy dixon let me turn back to you a little bit about your program the home visiting program and again we've talked a little bit about how you and and the folks that you work with kind of start helping families and talking to families even during pregnancy mm -hmm. and then of course birth and very young you know newborn and it could be first child could be after the fifth, after the first, right? Yes. Um, numerous um, mm -hmm. children that are eligible for your for your services, and yes. and the idea being to try to again help parents so they don't maybe feel like they're alone because no baby is born with an instruction yes. label taped to their person. Yes. So um, I'm sure there's a lot of questions <laughs> yeah. that maybe new parents have for for your folks. Oh yeah, and it like you said, it could be their first or their fifth child, and each child is different. They're gonna learn at a different rate. One will potty train a lot sooner or a lot later than the other one. And so, I would think that parents kind of worry about that. Like, yes. but what happened? My, my first child was potty trained at X, and now yes. this one's taking X plus 
weeks to do it. So right. what's wrong? What's what am yes. I doing wrong or whatever? And it may not be anything at all, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And to help ease your mind, we do also offer developmental screenings. We offer depression depression screenings. Excuse me, for those who've just given birth. We offer um, domestic violence screenings. A whole array of things to make sure that the family is okay. And we focus primarily on positive parent-child interaction. So the curriculum that we utilize is parents as teachers. And I feel like that title alone just says it all. You know, the parents right. are the teachers, not us. We're just there as an additional support to help even just provide some tools and resources to give families. And that program, I've heard it before, and mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of data that supports kind of how effective that program is yes. in these situations, isn't there? Yes, it's a nationwide curriculum. Um, they use it in Australia, North America, everywhere. So right. it is an evidence-based curriculum. Very good. And I, I would think that maybe there are some parents who are a little hesitant about maybe calling to say to maybe, and they feel that by calling, they, they're admitting that they need help, but that they're maybe yes. struggling. And, and, I, and I don't want to leave that impression right. because I think a lot of parents who've, who have called you mm -hmm. are probably very, very grateful that they did. And you hear a lot of success stories right. um, once their child kind of graduates at three years old from yes. your home visiting program. Exactly. And I feel, I tell parents a lot, it's a lot like homeschool for your children, but you're the teacher. And we, like I said, we provide um, activity bags to drop off at their homes. Mm -hmm. We also provide virtual group connections. So we'll connect as a huge group over Zoom and do like fun activities just so parents get to know each other and interact. And sometimes they even become friends and create these lifelong relationships. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Which is great. Well, and learn they're not in it alone. There's yes. others going through the same thing. So. Yes. And we also offer assistance with diapers and wipes. Um, we've in the past we've provided car seats to those in need um, anytime we need like a family's in need of clothes or something we'll do what we can on our part to seek a donation for those families very good excellent well and as we run out of time this morning let me ask for the phone number again or how folks can get a hold of either one of you or your programs that we're talking about this morning whether it's home visiting pre-k early head start head start Jill what's the number to, yeah. to call three two six six four three four um, they can also stop by 608 Riley Avenue. Um, that's here in Farmington, kind of off of Municipal, right across from uh, the police station, kind of down from the police station. And City Hall, City that Hall. area. Thank you, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right in that area, um, you know, they can stop there. They can stop at any one of our locations. Um, if you're, again, in Farmington, you know, the 900 South Carlton as well um, to come in and get that application. So, you know, definitely I say do not hesitate, don't wait. We do fill up quickly. We're beginning to do selections now. Um, you know, and I also do want to state if, you, if your child has a disability, has an IFSP or an IEP, um, you know, we, we will still take those children because often I think parents think, oh, my kid has a, has a disability, you're not going to serve them because nobody's going to serve them. And that's not the case at all. Still, come on in. We work with those public schools, and we will definitely, you know, they can come to us half a day, and they can also go to the special preschool for half a day. Good to know. Yeah. Very good. Thank you for mentioning yeah. that. And, Amy, same number for your program, yes. right, if folks want to call and get more information. And, and I would assume there's really no limit to your program necessarily, no. right, that, no. that you can kind of expand as, as the need grows, right? Right. We're contracted to 50, but, I mean, we take... Okay. All. <laughs> We'd love to max that out, I yes, guess, right? Yes, all year so, long. <laughs> that'd be wonderful. Very Absolutely. good. And before I let you go, Jill Adair, I have to ask you a little bit about one thing you mentioned that you're working on already to plan for, and I thought it was going to be hot this morning, so it'd be a great thing to talk about, but it's cool. So maybe that's got us <laughs> thinking about Christmas and December and yes. Festival of Trees from Festival PMS, Trees. and it's going to be back this year again. Yep. We are. We are planning on doing it again. We're still in the total... Uh, making stages right you know um, but do plan on it we will be back and you know bigger and, and better than ever we are really really excited we have a great committee you know coming to together so 
um, we will be back. Glad to hear that. So good luck with the planning okay. and all Thank that. You. But I know um, you did it last year in a different way as well, safely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it just goes to show what dedicated folks can come up with yeah. when uh, we want to see a community mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. and we're so glad to hear Festival yes. of Trees will be back right. in December. Thank so, thank you both for coming in this right. morning, talking about your great programs mm -hmm. and all the work that you do for the families of San Juan County. Thank all you. Right. Thank, thank you. you for having us. You're very welcome. My guests this thank morning you. from Presbyterian Medical Services, Jill Adair, mm -hmm. Amy Dixon, with me here on KSJE. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.